And now we come to number three in our studies on rest in Christ. This one's entitled The Root of Restlessness. And there's a very quick answer to that, isn't it? The root of restlessness is sin, is our sinful nature, our selfishness, our desire to have everything for ourselves. That's really the root of our restlessness because, as Augustine said, we only find our rest when we find our rest in God. And that is true for all of us, I would suggest. We're given material there in Matthew, Luke, Philippians, Matthew again, and James. And it's referring to various statements that Jesus has made. He says that he came to bring division like a sword. And then he says, if you try to save your life, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life because of me, you will save it. You have to have a different perspective on this life and not be thinking of just this earthly time. This is just the preparation for an eternal life. And then what about Luke chapter 12? Jesus' parable about the man who had so much in terms of wealth, his harvest, his possessions, that he says, I'm going to have to get more storage space. I'm going to have to build bigger barns because without that, I'm not going to be able to store everything that I've got. And it's all for me. And Jesus says, the tragedy was that that night he died. And he comments that that is the way it is for people who are not rich towards God. This man had not invested in his spiritual life. He'd only invested in his earthly, present, physical life. And he thought that by all this stuff he had around him, he was rich. But clearly he was not. Just like the people of Laodicea who looked at all the things they had and said, look, we are rich, increased of goods, as the King James says. But they were not rich towards God. They were poor and blind and naked, says Jesus in that revelation. Don't forget revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's the revelation by Jesus Christ. It's the revelation from Jesus Christ. Jesus is speaking to us very clearly there in the book of Revelation, as well as his words there in the Gospels. Luke 22 that's the story of the Last Supper. And what were his disciples arguing about? Who is the greatest? And there's a very sad commentary on human nature. They weren't thinking of following Jesus' words when he said, don't be like the kings and the leaders of this world. Anybody who wants to lead in your group, your society, in the church, must be the, well, he says, servant, or well, actually slave of all. You have to serve others. We get the phrase servant leadership, which is often used today, but that's really what we're thinking about here giving of ourselves, not thinking selfishly. The, the root of restlessness is selfishness, as I said before. It's the way that we want everything to be about me, me, me. And Jesus says, no, that is not the way. And for Jesus at the end of his ministry to discover that his disciples are still arguing over who's the greatest, who's the most important, that must have been so, so disappointing. It, it showed that they really didn't get his message. They hadn't really understood its implications. And we need to turn to that and think about that. Are we still arguing who is the greatest? Are we looking for position? Are we looking to get ahead of everybody else? What is our motive in our work, in our life, and especially in our church and spiritual lives? I would like to suggest that we follow the example of Jesus who simply looked out for the best interests of other people, not caring so much about himself, but thinking of what can I do for all these other people. Let's have that kind of attitude, the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, that should be in us. May God bless you.
as you do just that.